Hey guys, Andrew Newland here with Newtography.com and fstoplounge.com and I had a viewer request on a tutorial um, how to shoot star trails and star time lapse images. So today I'm going to go over some of the preparation that I do for when I'm planning on shooting a star trail image. Okay, so I've had a specific star trail shot in my idea book for a while now, and I figured that it would be a great one to do this video on. But there is a lot that goes into making a really great star trail image. But this will be a kind of mini series of sorts as I make a video for each different step that I take when I'm creating one of these star trail images. All right, so the first thing we do to prepare is we check a couple key things, and these things play a key part in how many stars will actually show up in our image. Uh, first, we just need to go ahead and check the weather, uh, make sure there's not gonna be any cloud cover that's blocking our view of the stars. This is a pretty obvious thing, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but this is very important because if we have a cloudy night, then that's going to obviously prevent us from from getting any stars in our image. All right, so if uh, we pass the first test and we have a clear cloudless night, then we need to go ahead and consider the next thing, which is the moon. Okay, so depending on what type of image you're wanting, you're either going to love or hate the moon. If you're wanting to get a great image of the Milky Way galaxy, uh, then the moon is not gonna be your friend. You're gonna need to shoot when the moon is not out or it's a new moon, uh, which means that the moon is completely black. This is because the moon reflects a tremendous amount of light from the sun, and this can actually drown out much of the night sky, uh, which really won't allow you to get any good shots of the Milky Way. But on the other hand, say you're shooting a really cool um, nighttime landscape or you have a foreground object that you want to light, the moon does an extremely good job at lighting the night earth in a very beautiful way. Uh, you should also consider where it is that you'll be shooting. The shot that I'm going to create for this video is in the middle of a city. So I'm already fighting a lot of light pollution from the city itself. So having the full moon out on top of all that light pollution isn't going to allow for many stars to actually show up in my shot. So just keep that in mind as well. And while we're talking about light pollution, um, I will also say that light pollution is going to be your arch nemesis whenever you are wanting to get Milky Way shots. So to get the best Milky Way shots, you should really try and shoot somewhere far away from civilization and light pollution. Um, there are some good dark night sky websites that I'll put in the description box. But just try to get away from any major cities um, and then try to get to a high altitude. Um, in the grand scheme of things, I know a high altitude isn't bringing us all that much closer to the stars, but any little bit really helps. Uh, there's also many atmospheric uh, variabilities that can affect our Milky Way shots. So ideally, you really just want to get somewhere out away from civilization and light pollution um, in a high mountainous area with low humidity and um, that you will just really be blown away at the Milky Way shots you can get if you can just get to a place like that. All right, now that we uh, have the conditions that we want to shoot in, let's figure out where we're gonna be shooting. Now, oftentimes I'll just kind of go out and wander and find somewhere to shoot but whenever I'm creating something that I really have put a lot of thought into, I like to plan where I'm gonna shoot ahead of time. I do this by using an insanely powerful tool called Google Earth. Um, Google Earth is basically just Google Maps on steroids, but let's hop over to the computer and I'll show you how I use it. Okay, so let me show you exactly how I use this. Let's go ahead and launch Google Earth. All right, so this shot that I'm planning is um, of the landmark in my city here of Chattanooga, and it's the Chattanooga Aquarium. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so as you can see, you can just kind of search for it, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna zoom in to the Earth from outer space and show me exactly what I'm wanting to shoot. Um, this aquarium is, uh, as you can see here, I have the 3D buildings turned on over here on the checkbox. That's kind of important. Um, and as you can see, the aquarium has these glass um, pyramid-ish type 
roofs and it's right on the river and it's uh, it's just part of our little river view that we have in the city here. So what I am wanting to do is compose one of these points to where the north star is right behind the point which would make all of the other stars rotate around it. Alright, so just from living here I know that right now um, how this is set up I'm on the south side of the aquarium looking north um, so the north star should be up in here somewhere but I'm still gonna need to get lower all right um, and I'm thinking that in this general area is where I'm gonna want to compose so what I do is I come up here to where you see this little Sun in the mountains and that shows time okay so Here's what I'll do. I'll scroll it back and you can see like this shows you literally how the Sun hits everything um, But it also shows you at night the stars, okay? Okay, so let me get up close here um, I'm gonna have a wider angle than this. So I'm not really worried I'm just kind of wanting to get an idea of where exactly I need to position myself so um, As you can see the North Star is right there. It is the star that is not moving very much this is pretty cool, right? You can see the trail of the stars on any date in time ever. You can go way into the past, way into the future, and see exactly how the Milky Way is going to um, be, and yeah. I'm going to have a pretty wide angle, but this is essentially where I'm going to compose myself, right here. You can see that the North Star remains hidden the majority of the time behind the tip, and that's going to give me a star trail shot of all of these stars just moving around the tip of this and since I'm in the city the aquarium will be well lit by the city lights um, and I'm not sure how many stars are going to show up but I will have a good amount of stars just kind of rotating around the point so essentially I'm going to want to place my human right around where that white car is so let's see here exit ground level view and right around where this white car is so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parking spaces over to the right. And obviously I'm gonna get out of the way of these trees. But essentially I'm gonna walk forward from this parking spot and that gives me a good idea of how to compose it. I'll take a few really long exposures just to make sure I've got it composed right. Um, okay. But that cuts out a lot of time of me just like wandering around, trying to take five minute exposures and see if I have the right composition. This gets me roughly right where I need to be immediately and then I can make some micro adjustments from there. All right guys, so that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, I hope you were able to take something away from this. Uh, and if you wanna learn more and see the final product, then please subscribe. And if you're interested in learning more about Newtography, or me personally, then go ahead and head on over to Newtography.com. And from there, you can see my portfolio and blogs and click any of the social media links to follow me on the social media site of your choice. Um, thanks for watching. Love you, bye.